All right, welcome back, everybody. We are out of our executive session. We are uh, at our uh, open forum agenda item. So if anybody is on the call and has something they'd like to a comment or a question for the board, please either uh, what is it, raise your digital hand or uh, give us something in the chat so we know who you are, where you're from, and what your question is. Zach, we need to roll call back in, especially since I wasn't oh, here that's right. for the yeah. roll call out. We'll do a roll call to enter back into our open session. Um, Michelle? Yes. Stu? Yes. Joanne? Yes. And Zach? Yes, we are back in open session. So if there's anyone with an open forum question, please let us know, and we will get to that. I don't see anything. Do you see anybody, Ray, who would I like to? I do not see ask? any questions at this time. Okay. If we missed you or if you think of a question, please put it in the chat. We will try and get to it. Uh, next agenda item is the approval of minutes. We've got the March 14th, 2022 meeting minutes in the packet. Take a look at those and let us know if you have any questions. If anyone wants, by the way, wants to um, abstain on this or you know push this off to the next meeting because Stephanie isn't here, that is fine too. It's up to you guys whether you want to proceed without her or not. I, I looked at them. I didn't see anything glaring at all. I think Michelle noticed on page three, um, there is a line that says public health museum. And I don't remember any discussion that we had about that. Um, so maybe we just strike that because it's not even a full sentence. Where was that? Uh, page three on the March 14th meeting minutes. It about oh, yeah. way down the page, it says yeah, 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 yeah. Public Health Museum. I just, maybe we talked about something like that, but I don't remember if it, I don't think it was an actual like discussion item. Was that before? Well, that was before Public Health Week. Maybe it was supposed to be in someplace else? Possibly. I just don't recall the I, discussion. I, I think we it. talked about, um, because isn't it located in Tewksbury or something, Ray? Yeah. I, I vaguely yeah. remember us talking about it. Yeah, I can't remember what we were talking about. Um, right. I think something that was interesting, if you went, I don't know. There was. Yeah, I can't remember if there was. But I, I almost there. think we have to get rid of that because. Yeah. yeah. It there. might have been for public health week. It is an interesting place. If yes. anybody wants yeah. to go. You could add that to the sentence. In, in the end, <laughs> it is they probably, and I know they have stuff there on the um, the eighteen nineteen pandemic, but I don't think that's what we talked about. I forget. Yeah. Any other comments or corrections? No. Is there a motion to accept the meeting minutes of March fourteenth, twenty twenty two? I'll make that motion. Motion made. Is there a second? Um, point of order. Point I just have a quick quick question. Do you know if Stephanie um, saw these before? I don't know exactly when she left to, to see if she had any comments or not. She did see them. She did not have any comments. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do we have a second? Second. Any further questions? Those in favor of uh, approving the Monday, March 14th meeting minutes, please say aye. 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 That seems to be unanimous. Next up is the April 11th meeting minutes. Take a look at those, see if you have any questions or comments. I had none. Or <clears throat> Anybody else have any questions? I, I didn't have any. No, I'm looking through real quick again. Okay. I don't think so. <clears throat> no. All right, is there a motion to accept the meeting minutes of April 11th? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further questions? Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those are passed unanimously. All right, our next agenda item is, would have been, I, I'm gonna say, I don't think we probably wanna do this without uh, Stephanie here, but would have been the reorganization of the Board of Health members. Um, I think we should probably postpone this till Stephanie is back, if that's okay with everybody. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up uh, agenda item is the update on the 115 Concord Road site declared 21E by the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection. Yes, so um, we received a call from a resident who was uh, going through an open house at this site. It is up for sale, um, happened to be an environmentalist and reached out to ourselves in the DC. Um, 
it just turned out that on the property in the back, there's quite a large business garage where there was a paving, asphalt paving company many years ago. The site was declared a 21E site, according to the MassDAT. There is a uh, spill on the property of hazardous materials, uh, petroleum. And so when there's 10 gallons or more, the site is declared a 21E, which means they have to hire a licensed site professional to come out and evaluate the site. There are, there's a 500 foot berm of recycled tires and trash. There's several propane tanks, 55 gallon drums. There's a smell of kerosene on the property, um, old lakes and tanks that were there many years ago. There's a wetland uh, near the area. Uh, so conservation, fire, and the water department have been notified about this, this site. Uh, we've all paid a visit out to the site and reached out to solid waste. What happens is DEP will um, oversee the 21E cleanup, but they do not oversee the propane uh, tanks and they do not oversee uh, the solid waste portion under this water. So um, I did reach out to solid waste today. They recommended I go out to town council and get some guidance as to our order um, because, you know, from the health department's perspective, we can cite under the state sanitary code for housing code for trash. We also have our local bylaw and regulation for hazardous materials. Uh, conservation is writing their own order. So we want to make sure that we're writing the best order to make sure that the cleanup takes place um, property-wide. And, and so we're not superseding anyone's regulation or not supposed to be. Uh, the homeowner who owns the property has been notified and they are very willing to do whatever needs to be done to take care of this at this time. So I just wanted to bring this to your attention. This is not something that happens uh, every day here. So uh, especially where it's a uh, personal private property um, with a residential how, home on it. How are they able to have all that there? So what happened was years ago, it used to be two lots. One was a business residence, and the folks lived on the second lot, which was their private home. Um, over the years, both lots were converted to one lot, and the home's up for sale. So um, because of that, because there's a residence on the property, um, we just happen to be flat to this property. And it isn't until you go to the rear of the property behind this firm that you see this kind of hot mess out there, if you will. So um, DP did walk the site. Um, I have been talking to them several times, you know, talked to them several times last week, talked to them this morning, um, and they have sent out the order to the owner. I have a meeting tomorrow morning with town council on what our order will look like from our department. Are any fines gonna be issued against this property owner? I mean, this is just crazy mismanagement of hazardous waste for decades. Um, the gentleman that owned the property is no longer living. Either the company has since um, been distinguished, if you will. Um, the folks that are selling the property is someone that was left the property in probate court. So um, they're willing to do all the cleanup and make sure everything gets taken care of, do what they need to do. Um, but as far as fines at this point, when I've spoken with the DP, the what we're looking for is compliance for cleanup. Um, certainly fines will be issued if, um, you know, they don't cooperate and the cleanup doesn't take place. And, and they're responsible for the payment of all the cleanup, correct? Correct. Yeah. So they didn't live there, they just inherited the property. Correct. <laughs> yes, this property's been vacant for a good 20 years. Wow. And um, if by some chance while this is taking place, a new buyer came along and, you know, put in an offer, would that new buyer know about this? I mean, is the there... They would need to disclose this to any buyer and the new buyer would be responsible. Okay. So there, there's no way that, you know, I could accidentally go buy the property and not know about it and then find out about it after the closing. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you for that update. And who's the one who brought it to your attention? Somebody who was looking at the property? It was someone that was there uh, walking the property who happened to be interested in purchasing the property and happened to be in this field. And uh, 
happened to walk the back of the property and saw, saw everything. So. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh. so all of our departments are working closely together. Um, like I said, with orders and uh, making sure that this, no one's living on the property. The site um, appears to be secure. The home and the garage is empty. Um, and again, this is these items out there have been laying out there for 30 plus years. This is something that can I ask a question about testing? Um, mm -hmm. I assume that when the cleanup takes place, there'll be testing before and after. Right. Or, so or after. Like, right. And when I ask the DEP about soil testing, water testing, the water department is going to test the adjacent stream um, for petroleum products. Um, but the LFP will design what exactly is going to take place according to the regulations for the state. So they will determine what needs to be tested, as far as soil goes, how much soil needs to be taken up. Um, again, as part of the 21E, the berm itself will not fall into this order. The health department is looking to make sure that berm is removed. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's not just tires, it's you know like a mixed mass of trash. Over, there's 20 foot trees growing out of this berm. This isn't wow. a fresh new berm. There's um, all kinds of tanks hanging out of the berm um, and drums that are open. So we want to make sure this, but first the LFP will uh, do an assessment, a site investigation, and see what they come up with. Well, thank what you, was the, the I'm sorry, what was the company again that was there? Um, it was called Rice Paving, Asphalt Paving. Paving, paving, okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so happy to answer any questions. And certainly, you know, this will be a, an ongoing process and we'll keep you up to date. Great. All right, our next agenda item is update on immunization revolving account. So currently our department has an immunization revolving account and this account is used to purchase our vaccine. Vaccine for all of our clinics is purchased six to eight months in advance of any clinic that we put on every year for the flu season, for instance, we've already put in our order. Um, so what happens is um, this account has a cap, a cap of how much can be spent out of it each year, and that was $60,000. Um, I have asked that we increase that cap to $75,000. The price of vaccine has increased. We want to offer more clinics. Uh, for instance, this year we have um, a Shindrix or Shingles vaccine clinic that we'd like to offer to the community. So um, to be able to purchase that ahead, we've asked for an increase. Last Thursday night, the Finance Committee approved that increase. And tomorrow night, um, this agenda item is on the Board of Selection, the Pig Select Board, excuse me, agenda um, for approval. And that will go in front of town meeting. This is that, for that has to go. You said that, that has to go in front of the town meeting. That can't just be approved. It's not. Okay. Yeah, all revolving accounts. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Do, do, do they need a or do you need a vote from us or not? I uh, sure that would be great. Okay, and I think it's just important to point out. I'm sure everyone here knows it, and maybe if you're watching at home, you don't. Um, that just because we're increasing this doesn't mean that the town is paying more. It's just that because we collect fees that go back into that revolving account, so more than likely it will still come out a wash. Um, so yeah, if, um, if there's someone on the board who'd like to make a motion to approve the um, increase in spending for the immunization revolving account from 60,000 to 75,000. Can I, can I also um, explain too that when the cost of the vaccines go up, but also the reimbursement that comes back uh, is also increased. Um, so like you said, it's a wash, but you have to have that you know in the kitty ahead of time and then because our reimbursements come back it's not like a doctor's office that gets or you know any other medical facility that gets reimbursed every week or every other week it comes back at, at four or five times per year during the year so it could be months before you know we get a big check a reimbursement check so that's the important part of making sure that the the, the ceiling is as high as it can be we can we can take in as you know as much as we want. You can only spend out as much as allowed. So we really need to have that buffer 
because the reimbursement only comes back like four times a year, just as an added explanation. Great. But I will make that motion. All right. And I'll, and I'll second And a motion. Very nice. And Sue seconded. <laughs> Any further discussion? Those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? It is unanimous. Uh, next up is the American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA's update and discussion, discussion regarding the tobacco inspections. Sure, a uh, couple things with ARPA requests. So the dental request has been submitted. That is not on the agenda for uh, tomorrow night. That will be on the end of May. Um, that was a $20,000 request that the board approved. Uh, to be asked for ARPA funding for our senior dental program. And so that funding helps folks who do not have dental insurance that are over the age of 55. Um, so we're excited to see if that is approved. Um, the second ARPA request that uh, we were just approved through the select board and the Council of Aging. It's a joint project, Council of Aging and the Health Department. It's an after school program and a camp program for folks that are not able to afford to send their kids to camp. So it's one week of free camp or uh, one week of $400 cap for after school program. And that is available to folks um, who apply. That program's advertising is gonna go out uh, within the next week or so. So we'll be looking for that. Uh, that's for folks that are unable to afford to send their kids to camp. So we're really excited about that, especially where so many folks were affected with COVID um, and their job security and hope this can help in some way. So this is being paid oh, with all the funding. Ray, where did that come? I mean, I was so happy to see that. Where did that, like, how how did that come about? So that came about uh, talking with the uh, senior center and the Council of Aging um, and the Recreation Department to see what some of the needs are right now with the aftermath of uh, job security with COVID. Um, and right now, with speaking with both of them, they've seen not only seniors struggling, but some families that are unable to afford, again, to send their kids to after school uh, programming and a camp. So uh, talking all of us together, Brittany Nash, um, Jennifer Clara with the Senior Center and Michelle Collette uh, put this program together and presented for the select board. And, and so how, how is it, you said it's going to be start to be advertised. Like, so I work in the schools. How is, is it going to be advertised through the schools or? How? So right now they are meeting with them today. Sorry, the headphones keep slipping off here. Yeah. Um, meeting with them today. Um, they are not going to advertise specifically in student packet. At this time, they want to see there's a $30,000 cap at this time for this program. So um, they anticipate the demand will be great. So the, right now we're gonna advertise through all three departments to the public, uh, put it on the town of Westford's uh, main web page under a food uh, flash notice and um, accept applications that way. The health department will be responsible for reviewing the applications and working directly with recreation, uh, our treasurer's office and the council of aging. And so the, the Max would be a student would get a week. Is that what you said? So they would get one week of what's called Kids Club. It's through the Recreation Department. Yeah. Uh, one week of free camp. And then after school program, it would be a cap of $400 a week for uh, a child for an after school program. So per child is 400 mm -hmm. And is this going to be on a first come, first serve or a lottery it's a basis? First, no, it's a first come, first serve process. And they have looked at um, income levels at the federal income poverty level of 300%. So uh, that will all be in the packet or be in the application who qualifies, who does not. Um, and again, after we were able to see what the need is, then we can certainly advertise it you know, more and see if we can um, get more funding. So you don't you don't want it advertised through the schools? No, I mentioned it uh, going directly into the principal's newsletter. And oh, okay. I did mention that. I mentioned going directly into kids' packets, backpacks. Okay. Um, but I think they're a little nervous about the initial, you know, five hundred applications. Got and it. Thirty thousand. Mm -hmm. So okay. we will advertise it and see what we get. Um, certainly um, for interest. If it turns out, you know, we we would trickles are coming in, 
then we will go to the next step, which is Got to go to the schools. Okay. And that's great that the, the Council on Aging and the Senior Center are on board with this because it's a youth issue. So, yeah, you know, yeah. it's nice to see, you know, the town working together you know, yeah. at all ages. So yeah. we really do. We work closely with the with the um, Council on Aging um, and the social works uh, for health and human services all the time for housing cases, hoarding. Um, right now they're in the process of hiring a mobile commission to bring services for mental health here in the community um, for those hours of the day available for kids and for uh, residents of all ages. Mm. So we work together all the time on different kinds of programming. So we're excited about it. Yeah, no, but I mean, it, it obviously isn't their direct population. So it's nice that they signed on, you know, and said, I just think that's, I wanted to mention that's nice. Yeah, yeah that's so great. they have a successful program um, when in the height of the pandemic with housing and folks that needed help with they had a rental program um, where they had this model that was very successful so they've been really great about showing us the model training Brittany and helping her with um, the start of the review of these applications fabulous great thank you for that update sure. uh, next up in, on the agenda is the COVID-19 education and recommendations wait a minute um, weren't we going to discuss tobacco inspections in that too Oh, was there an update on that? Um, so I just wanted to mention that at this time, um, we are still in the process of uh, looking at who in our department will be able to um, conduct tobacco inspections. As you are aware, uh, we do not have anyone at this point uh, to conduct those inspections. Um, and how long have we not had that person? Uh, for that spring, right? I believe since 2018. Oh my been... God, that is insane. So, so um, do we have like... <laughs> So there's kids who've probably been buying tobacco illegally and we don't know it? Correct. Signs are being issued and um, unfortunately we do not have the manpower this time to follow up on those inspections. And so just to be clear, we are trying to hire for that, but the select board is making us wait. I mean, I think they want to talk to us or something. Um, yes, so we are in the process of, we have an ARPA request in for a tobacco inspector. Um, we have also made some, some suggestions to uh, add those response job or responsibilities onto existing part-time positions, um, but at this time that has not been approved. So it's okay. almost it's almost four years since we've had a tobacco inspection. Correct. So do you have any idea in terms of total amount of fines that have either been written or issued that we have not collected on? Um, so yes. So uh, the PowerPoint presentation we put together, there was $5,200 in fines. And I believe that was within the last couple of years. Wow. So, so we, ne we never collected. Right wow. now it's the 2019 tobacco regulations through Governor Baker's office. Um, fines for tobacco are very different from any other um, state um, requirement that we inspect at this time. What I mean by that is with tobacco, you don't get an opportunity to correct. If they go in, it's a thousand dollar fine first time, thousand um, dollar. Food, it's a hundred. So that's very different with tobacco. They take it extremely serious. Right now, we just don't have the capacity. Staff capacity. But we don't take it seriously. Like that. <laughs> well, we really we do, but <laughs> the board does. Right the now, board the, town does, is, but yeah. the town doesn't. Mm. No, but I don't think the town. Anything. I don't think the town knows. Yeah, it's sending a bad message. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just from a public health standpoint, and you know, all that we have done in tobacco cessation. You know, and we're not talking about even cigarettes anymore. We're talking about vaping and and menthols and everything else that's yeah. been happening in that sphere um it's we the major slid step backwards, backwards. Major yes step we were always in the forefront um and but so besides all that we're also missing out on revenue it's embarrassing and, and people are actually breaking the, the the laws if you will and nobody's following up because we can't get a position the um i did check with the department of public health several resources um, our tobacco sensation collaboratives that are in Massachusetts uh, that are set regionally. Um, 
there's no funding at this time for Westport to join one of those collaboratives. These collaboratives have inspectors who will go out and sit backwards, but they do not have funding at this time for Westport to join. Um, I did look at several grants through the CDC, but those are for sensation courses. Um, and we have our regional community health and wellness coordinator working on the sensation portion. Um, but as far as inspectional inspections and follow up on fines, we do not have that. At this and, and just to be clear, Ray, you tried to save the town money by suggesting that we add some time to the food inspector position so that the food inspector position could also do tobacco inspections, which I think is a great idea, a very efficient idea. And this is kind of where the select board is hung up. They don't want us to go from an 18 hour food inspector position to a 20 hour food slash tobacco inspector position. So we did uh, we did request that the position would be full time uh, with tobacco, microblading, um, body art, and um, like I said, tobacco and vaping education. Uh, there's a big portion that not only has to take place in the establishment uh, with signage and um, stamp proper stamping and things of that nature, um, but you also need to um, provide programming in the schools for kids that are struggling how to put the faith in, you know, how does, you know, someone that's in that 30 to 57 year bracket who is faithing, there's no programming right now in town for sensation. That, that in and of itself is a easily a part-time yeah three-quarter time position just like the just like food i don't understand how we don't have a full-time food inspector but i'd be interested in some ways to find out like other towns how much they've collected in fines for example over the past four years um you know we haven't even had the opportunity because we haven't done any inspections and I'd, I'd be curious to know some of the towns that actually have the inspections done how much have they collected you know well the point is not to have violations. Well, exactly. Right? But, so it's yeah. just like food. The point is to, you know, keep people, keep the restaurant, you know, on track so that people don't get sick. Right. Um, and what what we're not doing is doing that. So there's a lot of activity out there that shouldn't be happening. Well, and, you know, just to clarify too, this position not only affects our retail establishments, but they follow up on fines that are issued in the school systems um, yeah. for folks that are first, second, third offense uh, for both vaping, marijuana, and tobacco. And they follow up on the collection of the fine. They follow up on taking it to so, court if need be. So if, if a student at WA, for example, is fined, it isn't being collected? Uh, there is no resource right now to follow up to make sure it's been collected. And if not, you know, no letters being sent or... I think I think we need to let the school system know about this. I, I really do, and and let them know that we don't have we don't have the the manpower to do it. And we've been trying to get the manpower, and we haven't been able. We've been unsuccessful. But you know, if they're issuing fines for the past four years, and I mean, and not, I mean, then kids even know that. Well, it's no big deal. Then I can get fined. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Oh, you don't think that's probably you know going around? Yeah. Of course. And they've yeah. graduated and gone, some of yeah. them. Yeah. yeah, so that is um, our tobacco issue at this time. Um, and, you know, we'll keep pursuing funding where we can and um, what we can do. All right. Uh, next agenda item then is the COVID-19 education and recommendations. Uh, so... COVID-19, it won't go away, no. <laughs> so I um, I just wanted, you know, to let you all know in the public uh, with our numbers here with the schools, um, we, you know, speaking with the public health nurse uh, this week and last week, we've been closely, you know, as we have been for the last few years, closely looking at the numbers. We are in a rise right now. It is not unexpected. Uh, we are three to four weeks behind Europe and South Africa. Uh, certainly with Easter, school vacation and get togethers, uh, we, we anticipated the rise. So um, I will say from May, these are maven numbers, these are state surveillance numbers only. This does not account for any home tests that is being given or taken. Um, this is maven numbers, West Progression. We've had 66 cases since the beginning of May, um, 15 of which are 
kids, and this again is of this morning, and uh, 51 that are older than 18. So looking at the school numbers, um, I was speaking with the school nurses, several school nurses today. They are also seeing a rise. A lot of the cases, and I'm sure Sue will want to speak to this as well, uh, a lot of the cases are events that are taking place. We just had Contillion here in the community. Um, there was a play. Several events are taking place, and certainly the COVID variant that is going around right now, which could be four, five, or 12, um, certainly is extremely contagious. So we want to really recommend, as the CDC has, has also said for last year, we recommend wearing a mask, tight fitting mask when you're indoors or in a crowded area. That's certainly, um, you know, uh, someone's personal decision, but we certainly rec would recommend that. Again, as a tool in the toolbox, and as we've been seeing along, good hand washing. Um, we recommend you know social distance where you can, when you can. Um, and if someone is sick, so please, please, please stay home. If you tested negative on a home kit and you think, oh, I'm good, I don't have COVID, must just be allergies. We're finding that a lot of people are testing positive on the third and fourth turn. So um, please, if you're coughing, sneezing, you work at your work site, you're with your kids, have your kids are going to school and they're coughing, have them wear a mask. Certainly recommended. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Mark, do you had something? Yeah, to I add? just, yeah, I did want to add one of the things that's really tricky right now is that we are not, Maven is absolutely not accurate. Um, most people are testing at home. Um, you know, all the school nurses are testing. We do symptomatic testing at school. The way it works is that parents have signed up for permission. So if a student comes in to me and they're symptomatic, um, I can go look in the system and see if the parents have signed up. If they've signed up, I don't need to even get permission. If they haven't, and I really do have concerns, I will call the parent and say, would it be okay if I do a, a, a COVID test? Um, I've had my cases at Stony Brook are really on the rise and a lot of them are related to something that happened um, outside of the school. Um, again, it was students from our school, but it was an activity outside the school. I don't blame any one event. You mentioned Cotillion, of course, that was just this weekend. Um, we don't know it, what, what, if, what of, of cases that are going to come from it, but we're afraid, I think, because anytime there's a big gathering um, right now, we're just concerned about it. Um, people have asked about the masking and whether we should be bringing it back in the schools. I don't want to go backwards at this time, but I one concern that I have is um, students that are not feeling well, as Ray just said, and not wearing a mask. Like, just put the mask on, you know. Um, or the other thing is, if if you have a family member that has tested positive um, at home. Um, and you're allowed to go to school if you're vaccinated, but the recommendation is to wear a mask. Um, and, and that's, again, we, we're not mandating it, but it is a recommendation. So I, I just think nice. that I, I really wish there'd be more of a, an awareness that, as you said too, not all those antigen tests are coming back positive right away. In fact, I've had some cases where the antigen test never came back positive and yet the PCR was positive and they were symptomatic. So it's just a scary time right now, even with the testing that it's not always accurate. Um, so, I mean, I'm still in favor of testing and I'm in favor of especially masking when you're not feeling well and, um, and all the other things that you talked about, Ray, you know, good hand washing and keeping your social distance, especially it, when you've been exposed um, to, to a situation, <clears throat> whether you've been vaccinated or not, that Omicron variant you know, we talked about this off camera, but a lot of us, unfortunately, have had had it. Um, and even those of us who have done the right thing and gotten vaccinated and boosted, because we know it's just very uh, contagious. And none of us were guaranteed when we got vaccinated that we wouldn't get COVID. We were just, you know, the, the whole thing about it was that we would not get really sick with it. And that has been the case um, for all the cases that I have seen in the school system anyway. So. so if I can make a comment too, I just wanted to kind of clarify a little bit, Sue, um, what you said, Maven, Maven is accurate. What isn't accurate is the cases that we can't, we don't see. That's what so I that's, yeah. yeah, that's the, I just want to make sure that people understand that it, what we're getting from the state 
is accurate, but we don't know when people test at home. Right. And what my concern is and what we're seeing um, is that I think it's been forgotten after, you know, all the tracing stopped and the the follow-up calls, the isolation and quarantine regulations are still in place. Yeah. They still exist. So even if you test at home and you test positive, you are still supposed to isolate. You are still supposed to, you know, do quarantine protocols. All that stuff still is there and there for a reason. And we've been finding that people either are not being honest when they test positive because they don't want to disrupt whatever it is that they wanted to do. Um, so they're not telling others, not wearing a mask, or they're not testing even with a home kit because I don't want to know. I still want to go to graduation. I still want to go to the wedding or I still want to go to the game or whatever. Um, and that is only perpetuating this disease. So we got to that point where, you know, we had to turn it onto our own personal responsibilities. Um, but I'm not sure everybody's living up to that. And I think that is one of the th key things that, that in terms of education that we all need to do, myself included in the town that I work for, is to remind people that you still have to isolate if you test positive. You don't just get to put on a mask and go to the grocery store. You have to stay home. Um, that is still in place. And you, you still need to test, even though you know everything's open. Um, don't not test because you don't feel good and you don't want to miss out on something because that's just potentially giving the virus to somebody who may not be vaccinated or who may have an underlying medical condition and you don't know that could be fatal for that person. People are still dying. People are still hospitalized, not in the same numbers that we were seeing, obviously, as before. And that's a good thing, but it is still happening. So that's my part okay um let's see any other discussions about COVID-19 seeing none we'll move on to the next agenda item which is mental health task force update so um, last month I mentioned that we were going to start the mental health task force as part of our department goals um and we did put out a meeting survey and an interest survey, if you will, to a significant stakeholder list, um, which included the select board, many stakeholders, groups here in the community, our local hospitals, um, and that list is in your packet. Um, we did get quite a quite an interest in responses. Uh, we have met with the chairs of the Town and Safety Task Force Committee here in Westford, uh, they have made a recommendation that they would love to meet with this, with all of you at a future select board meeting to discuss the mission, um, who the stakeholders or members would be as part of this task force, and uh, to get your input in not only the mission, but the goals and how we see this task force moving forward in the future. So I wanted to just bring that you know, invitation to you this evening um, to let you know that they would love to meet at a future meeting if you'd be interested. So I, I have one question for you, Ray. So has there been resistance to it since there is a uh, town and, and um, you know, town safety task force? No, I think, uh, you know, certainly I can't, speak on behalf of all the select board, but as far yeah. as the co-chairs of that committee, you know, they would love to see this mental health task force as a, um, not so much a spin-off, but um, as a result of the task force, uh, excuse me, town and safety task force, I guess there is a subcommittee for mental health. And so they would just like to make sure it's a um, collaboration on this task force. Um, it would be an official committee through the select board, in which case members, both from the public and from the stakeholder list, would be chosen um, or asked if they'd like to join the group. So um, they had an invitation, like I said, to all of you to see if that is something you'd be interested in. Well, and can you tell me a little bit more about the health resources in action? Because 
Um, is that the who you're thinking of um, doing the um, assessment for us? So the community health and wellness um, coordinator and myself have met with uh, health resources in action as part of not only our accreditation process, uh, we would like to conduct a community wide health assessment. And uh, after the health assessment is conducted, a community uh, comprehensive improvement plan would be conducted by these folks. And so we were requesting to put in a $200,000 request in the ARPA funding for the uh, company to come in and provide those. No, and the reason I ask, because we had done, um, there was an assessment done the first time around and you know there was definitely some, some of us who felt that there wasn't um, enough um, people involved, you know, when, when they gave us statistics about different groups, they, they didn't survey enough people, so to speak. So, Correct. yeah, so I'm hoping this time around, you know, I'm interested just to, to see that this is a, a place, um, it's local too, right? Right, correct. And yeah. so this, this company has been, do, you know, has a big history of doing community health assessments and community public health programming. Uh, and for, over, for health departments? Correct. Oh, correct. Okay. And for hospitals. Um, okay. Andover and North Andover in the process of looking to hire this company right now for their community health assessment. Uh, we've met with them twice. They suggested doing not only the community health assessment, uh, which would be about 100,000, but to also do the community improvement plan at the same time. And the reason being is once you get buy-in from partners and stakeholders, you don't wanna lose that. Yeah. Um, so they they recommended doing both at the same time. So that's the request that we have in through offer funding. Um, and we're putting that in uh, this week. Oh, that looks awesome, yeah. The mental, just to mention the mental health um, plan that was taken, we did look at that data. We've also looked at several different data points for not only the Greater Low Health Alliance, we've looked at four other mental health surveys that have been conducted in this area, including Westford residents. Mental health is the number one request of mental health resources from all the, West, the Westford residents. Yeah. Um, sorry, my computer's kicking out. And so that is the number one request uh, besides the four network. That's great. Thank you. All right, any other questions, comments? Next agenda item then is new and old business. We have an update on Beaver complaints. So just wanted to let you know, a couple of residents and uh, board members have asked we have an unprecedented amount of fever complaints this year. Been here a long time and I've never seen so many. I think we're up to seven different cases right now. So we're working closely with our Department of Public Works and also our Conservation Department uh, regarding some of the beaver issues. We have had an unprecedented amount of rain, not unusual, April, you know, April South, spring May flowers, that kind of thing. So um, we have seen quite a bit of rain and um, we're just, you know, seeing all kinds of backups all over the community with the beavers. Beavers are protected. So please don't try to hurt the beavers or to take out the dams. If you have any questions at all, you can certainly call our office and we'll help you uh, navigate the problem. And um, yeah, I think that's it for those. Thank you. Um, next up is protecting our tweens and teens anxiety awareness and suicide prevention event. Uh, so as part of the MRC NATO grant that we recently received, uh, Nancy Burns, who is our MRC or Upper Merrimack Valley volunteer coordinator for, for our region is putting this event on. Uh, we have a special speaker. We've been advertising not only on Facebook, but through the town website and through the schools. Um, this event is going to be taking place uh, this month. I have the flyer in your packet, as well as, um, like I said, advertised throughout the community. Uh, so we're really excited about this. Um, it's open not only to train MRC volunteers, but it's open to the public and kids of all ages. Great, thank you for that. Next up is the Nature Walk at Good Pickin' Farm. 
Uh, so just wanted to let you know, this is another event that's taking place as part of our mental health and wellness program. Uh, we partnered up with Good Picking Farm, which is over on Gould Road. And this event took place tonight, um, where it was a nature walk throughout the community with goats. Goats followed you around as you took them the walk throughout the property, uh, which was really neat. And then you had an opportunity to learn how to plant herbs and learn about the soil and you could walk away with your own potted um, time. So um, that was an event just to you know get people out in the soil and um, just be with nature. So wanted to mention that. Thank you to Good Picking Farm for putting that together with us. Nice. Uh, next up is the Regional Community Health and Wellness Coordinator, Brittany Nash, completed the mental health first aid training. I just wanted to let you know that Brittany, we talked last month about her taking this training. Uh, this was paid for by our Public Health Excellence Grant. Um, her uh, position is paid with the grant as well. Um, and so this mental health first aid training was a training where she could learn to be instructor to teach not only teachers, nurses, students about mental health and how to cope with those skills. Um, and that is something Brittany is going to bring here to Westford. She's working really closely with the schools right now um, to how to implement this program that would be most beneficial. Um, so I just wanted to mention that, that she did just complete it and we're really excited for it. So. Nice. And lastly, correspondence notification from Pan Am Railways regarding their post-emergent herbicide application program. Sure. So this comes to us every year. I just wanted to make sure that this was out to the public. This is uh, not something new. This happens annually. So Pan Am Railways does provide, um, they do an application of both herbicides and pesticides just so far on each side of the train track. And so anyone who has any concerns about wells or their property, you know, can certainly reach out to the health department, but this is something that takes place uh, each year here in the community and they notify us when that's about to take place. Um, so that is also a new package. Great, thank you for all those updates. Any other uh, questions or comments or updates from board members? Seeing none, uh, is oh, there- Ray has her hand oh, up. Sorry, Ray. Sorry, one last thing, and I apologize, I didn't put it on the agenda, but I just wanted to say um, happy Nurses Week to our public health nurse, um, Gail Johnson. She is amazing. And it's been a long haul, as everyone knows, with the pandemic. Um, I wanted to thank all of our school nurses and say happy Nurses Week to them. They are also on the front lines and we could not do it without them, especially with last year's with contact tracing and even continuing with the pandemic. So, um, and lastly, to our MRC volunteers who are nurses, uh, they have been at all of our clinics volunteering their time. They are not paid. They volunteer their time to give kids here in the community their COVID vaccines. Um, so we are so grateful. Tomorrow night is the MRC volunteer uh, appreciation dinner. And so I just wanted to mention that, that we, we, we definitely see the hard work and we appreciate all of, all of our nurses. So thank you, Sue and Joanne. Thank you. And flu shots. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ray, for that. Um, and thank you to all of our nurses. Um, is there anyone here who'd like to make a motion to adjourn? I will make the motion to adjourn. Is there a second? And I will second the motion to motion adjourn. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Those in favor of the motion to adjourn, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Great. Thank you, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, Thanks. everybody. Have a good night. Bye -bye. Good night.